The What Podcast, a podcast for you by us. Is that our new thing? Is that a new thing? Is that our thing? Or is what is our catchphrase again, Barry? Uh, it's been I, so long. I, yeah, I don't know. It's a I don't know. Bonnaroo, a, a podcast by with, Bonnaroo for with, people with a, by, thing, for with a person people. and a guy <laughs> and some things. Uh, which bands this year that matters is a podcast uh, for you by us uh, with Lord Taco, uh, Barry Corder, and Brad Steiner. Hi guys, how are you? Good morning. Hello. Uh, a lot of uh, things to just catch up on. Uh, here today uh, we anticipated putting the uh, war on drugs interview uh, out today but uh, we're going to punt on that until next week with a special never been done on the what podcast before uh, event next week uh, because there's just a lot to, to sort of clean up and go through nothing more important though than talking about dune now uh, we have yes. been trying to talk about this for a month <laughs> and we can't get to it I'm ready. I don't want to. Let's not start there. Barry, where you want to start? There's all kinds of things to get to today. Uh, oh, and then later on today, I want to put together our best guess as to what the lineup will be for Bonnaroo with no inside information. Right. Right. I, I have no inside information right now, but I'm going to put my best guess as to what it could be. Not what I want it to be, what I think it could be. Okay. All right, we'll go around the room for that uh, a little bit later. Where do you, you want to do that there? one later? If we're going to yeah. do that one later, then do you want to save the whole uh, what the heck? Where is Bonnaroo? Why, yeah. why, why have they gone quiet? Are we want to do that later as part yeah, of that let's, or start let's, there? Let's save that. I guess the, the place to start is probably the biggest news of the last you know six months is the probably. tragedy in, in Houston with Travis Scott. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think that everything that needs to be said has been said about it. Um, but uh, I'll let you take a swing at it, Barry. Well, yeah. Uh, first of all, it keep it continues to get get worse. Mm -hmm. um, victim number ten, what passed away uh, earlier this week, depending on when you're hearing this, the young nine year old boy who, you know, was on his dad's shoulders. Um, this one, uh, this one's hit me a little hard. Um, you know, typically I can disassociate myself because you know I wasn't there wasn't likely to be there. Um, but everything I read about the victims, uh, just reminded me more and more of not just, you know, us and people we know, but, uh, kids, children, uh, my children, you know, they're four, what, nine now to 27. Um, yeah. all just trying to have a good time. You know, that's all they were doing is just hoping to have a good time. Uh, number one. So that's just heartbreaking. But uh, I, I keep thinking also about our interview with Mark, um, you know, the author that we we talked to, uh, Mark Myers. Uh, oh, you got a book, too. He, they sent me a book. Yeah. Oh, really wow. Good. That's awesome. Um, they didn't send me a book because I don't read. <laughs> <That's why laughs> I told them that. Yeah. Um, but just the whole history. And I keep thinking. Uh, we talked about it a little bit during our conversation with him, uh, how much I missed festival seating. Um, and, and you guys are young enough. I don't think you even, um, I mean, you seem surprised by that whole idea, uh, but it goes back to the who uh, concert incident in 79 in Cincinnati, where I think it was 11 people. I had forgotten how many uh, were trampled to death. In those days, it was first come, first serve. You bought a $10 ticket. You got there early in the morning to get first in line, and then you sprinted to the front of the stage, and everybody was elbow to elbow, uh, and that's kind of what happened. I don't mean to interrupt, but I don't know this yes story or the who story. Yeah, 1979. Uh, they were playing the, the arena there, the Coliseum, and, and uh, people lined up, as I said, and I get, I don't, you know, the other thing about back then is they never started on time, and which built that sort of anticipation and whatever, but it also, so this was before the show that this happened. Yeah. Yeah. You would line it, you would buy your ticket and it was no assigned seating. So whoever, you know, you'd get there early and then you would rush to get to the front of the stage, um, any arena, you know, they had seating in the, the, the bleacher area, the 
and then the floor was typically open, no chairs. And so they would allow a certain number down there. Uh, the show I, obviously didn't go on. No, not that night. No, there okay. were so many people killed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they, they tore down or they busted out the doors, okay. jumped over barricades, pushed each other, trampled and oh people God. died. I bring it up to say the thing in Houston was by no means the first, but also after that thing in Cincinnati, uh, it changed, you know, from then on, uh, there was no more festival seating, uh, places like I've mentioned, our theaters here are very, um, strict about not even dancing, you know, up the front of the stage or in the aisles period, you know, period. There's yeah. that place doesn't want you to dance at all. No, but I, I think a lot of them are that way. And it's a, it's a health and safety and an insurance kind of thing. Um, Plus they're saving you the embarrassment. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> no, who, who really wants to see half of these people dance? Well, yeah. And there's the, you know, you kids get off my lawn down in front kind of thing. And that's the feel <laughs> that it, it gives to it. Unfortunately, that's what I was complaining about when we were talking to Mark, but now here we are, you know, two weeks removed from another tragedy. Um, where apparently, you know, rules, rules that had come out of that 79 incident, you know, and, and since, uh, were not followed. And, uh, unfortunately people are dead because of it. So the, the reason it's still worth talking about to me is what comes out of it going forward for other festivals, maybe nothing, maybe they'll find that, uh, the rules that were put in place, had they been followed, we wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. And, and other festivals are okay. But, uh, I mean, I've, I've been at Bonnaroo where, you know, you get in a huge crowd and you think, man, if I fall down, I'm in a bad place. Yeah. I mean, I will say that it does strike me as it, it sounds morbid, but it's a baffle. It's almost baffling that it doesn't happen more often. Um, you know, you get these loud, uh, these large crowds. I'll never forget the, the scariest moment I've ever had at a, at a music festival. And I no mean to try and apply this to this situation, but at the first Macklemore show at Bonnaroo, the rush was so big to get to the front of the stage from the, like the pit line. It was so overwhelming. I literally was picked up by the crowd. You know, it, nobody lifted me, but because the mass of people was pushing so hard, my body literally left the ground. I've never felt more scared yeah. um, because in that moment you fall down, you're trampled. Um, and I don't know if there's there's you say the rules. I don't really know how to prevent that. I don't know if, you know, you can implement any rules to to stop that. I have a feeling that most of the people, at least the ones that I talk to who are tertiary members of these these groups like the the c3s and the live nations and the golden voices i think that their view of it is mostly an isolated incident and um you know you just you don't really see these kind of things happen very often and that's what i i, I kept pushing back i but don't you think that it's very possible that it could again I mean, there's nothing saying that it couldn't happen again. Now, you it requires having an artist on stage that's a little bit more responsible, to say the least. I mean, right. the guy was just, um, I think it's safe to say we're probably not going to be hearing from Travis Scott for a while. Yeah, you know? I mean, Why not. <clears throat> Nobody's going to put him on a lineup. Nobody's going to put him, you know, anywhere near a stage mm -hmm. because of that, uh, that stigma and that liability. Well, the, yeah, the liability plus, you know, this guy's going to be tied up in lawsuits for, you know, how long? I mean, forever. If 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 right. the 10 victims have their, their way and, and he should. Yeah. He was the singular reason I have. This is my opinion, but he was the singular reason why a lot of this happened and it could have shut it down in in a minute. But, you know, you get in that moment and. You just don't think, well. I mean, they're like what I was talking about, like with rules and we've seen them, they use those barricades, you know, they create sections uh, and they, and it fills up those sections. So, you know, the 2000 or 3000 people can't surge on the 7,000 in front of them. Uh, and what I don't understand or what I'm not sure, sure of is if they had those and people just jumped over them or moved them or whatever. But I also understand there are supposed to be relief pockets to the sides 
uh, so that when things like that do happen, the crowd can, can expand, can move. Mm -hmm. And those were blocked off by security. And so I don't know, they'll, they'll figure all that out. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, uh, I've had it happen. I, and I've heard so many people who've been knocked down and, you know, once you're on the ground, you can't get up. Uh, and then that fear trampled yeah. and, and, and I, and I don't know if I, this has nothing to do with the, the Houston incident, but I mean, imagine you've been at Bonnaroo, you've been at music festivals when someone has, you know, either had heat, heat exhaustion, heat exhaustion, or, you know, maybe a tad too many drugs um, sure. and something happens and they fall out and you see this person just collapse. And if someone's not around them, taking care of them and the Bonnaroo people are very good about taking care of each other. I'll never forget the day at the Cardi B show where uh, I've never seen somebody, somebody's lifeless body be drug out of a, um, yeah. out of a, a crowd. It's, it's horrifying and it destroyed our entire day. Uh, you know, it affects you. It absolutely will affect you going forward. And, you know, I, um, I, I, I'm not smart enough to tell you what to do about it. I have yeah, no idea. I remember, I remember you guys coming back to camp after that. And, I mean, visibly I, shaken. I, yeah. It turns out, I think that the lady that we saw ended up being okay, but you know, at the time you're just watching this happen. Um, and I can't imagine, you know, the, the seeing the videos, right. Are, is so startling. And so gut wrenching of the human beings just like screaming at right, you know right. other people, and you know this poor cameraman, like he doesn't, hey, what is he gonna do? You know, what he is just the, thinks somebody's trying to get at him on stage. Yes, yes, you know, he's I got put, a job did, to do, I, and people screaming in his ear. He has no yeah. idea what's going on. I saw that too, and I put myself in his spot. I'm thinking he's just thinking some crazy fan got up on stage, and you know, what was the show, Brad? And and I, I can't remember. Uh, early 2010 maybe it was like the this or the other stage where the a, a female singer she started saying y'all co come closer and they were like body surfing people from the back towards the front mm -hmm. you know do you remember i think i, I don't remember that. but i mean my point it is takes on a, it takes on a different life th that my Post point Houston, is that line that's right you. yeah that line those people it was it was amazing you know the energy that it created um, I mean, it, you know, we, we sit here and talk about like, what are the ramifications for a festival? I mean, I think it's more of an artist thing like that artist, whoever did that's never going to do that ever again. Correct. And, that's you know, actually, thank God. Uh, yeah. I mean, now that I think about it, it sounds that's like what a I terrible mean, that, idea. That line it, at the time, it was great. But uh, I do remember hearing from even the artist. Uh, I remember reading the next day and like the Bonnaroo uh, paper, like, oh, that, you know, I looked up and, oh my gosh, what have I done? You know, just a simple comment had created this whole, you know, once the first person did it, it became a thing. It was crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've got a, we've got a girl peeing on a guy's face. Yeah. You know, uh, like this, just the, the, oh, the days of having, <laughs> you know, a barrier between, you know, the artist and the, 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 like things are just going a little haywire, you know? And, um, you know, there, God love Big Frida. I mean, she's so much fun. Um, but, you know, and this is just a small venue. Every show she has, you know, 50 people come on stage and twerk. You know, even that's making me feel uncomfortable. Sure. You know, with all that being said, you know, I, it is a, just a horrifying tragedy. It's, it's um, gut wrenching because of what we do and, and how we are involved with this. And this could have been at any festival that we've ever been to. And, you know, lives are destroyed and families are destroyed. I do have just a sort of out of context question for you. You've had small children. Have you ever considered taking them to a large scale festival like that? Uh, well, I mean, both of mine went when they were 17. You're talking about small children. I'm talking nine, 10 years old. Is that or younger? Is that, Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. I, I remember the first time I saw a, basically a three or four year old at Bonnaroo walking around with headphones, you know, those ear um, yeah. protections. And I just thought, why? I mean, if you're, if you're concerned enough to think about their hearing protection, <laughs> well, I, 
I don't know where that line, why? I mean, you know, the child isn't going to enjoy it. Um, you're now obligated to take care of that child. I, you couldn't get a sitter. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I maybe don't. somebody could explain that to me, but I don't get it. I'll be honest with you. There's two places. Babies don't belong. Bonnaroo and Plains. And restaurant. You know, they just don't need to be there. And, you know, I, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to say anything about your you as a parent. But my God, it makes me uncomfortable to see children at Bonnaroo. It makes me uncomfortable to see children at, at lot anywhere with these things. It just does not compute. And, you know, if you're a parent and you've got it, you know, locked. I'm not a parent. I don't know what, you know, you guys have to go through and what you're thinking, but it's just not something that I feel as though is a problem, a very safe environment, no matter how, you know, good there are just that, just the practicalities of it. I mean, I've thought about that. I mean, you know, I was, I'm serious about restaurants. Um, I I'm not the type I'm serious about airplanes. I know. Well, (laughs) I'm not the type that thinks my child is so beautiful and gorgeous. And you're going to think so too, that, you know, you should put up with them number one, but number two, it's not fun for me. You know, as a parent to have a, a screaming child that I'm having to deal with while I'm trying to eat. I mean, you have me. Well, I, exactly. I, you know, <laughs> I have I have my issues, my cross the bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I just don't. Yeah. I, I, and, you know, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's I, I don't want to cast aspersions and, and judge, you know, the parents and, and who, but I don't know, man, why are you bringing, yeah, the only thing I could why think... you bringing a nine year old to any of this? Uh, I don't I don't give a damn if it was a Clint Black show. You know, I I went to my first show at 13, you know, <laughs> and my first show was and I've said, I don't know if I have I told you guys what my very first ever concert was. I think so. And then I think I told you, you, Lord Taco does not know. I I would never tell Lord Taco because he would. But I'm going to tell you right now. Was it Hootie? It was not Hootie. No, it was not Hootie. It was a Mr. Michael Bolton. And the opening act was Celine Dion at the UTC McKenzie Arena when I I, I must have been 12 or 13. You know, that's probably going to be pretty safe. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Those Bolton women, do you? You, you could get torn to put pieces. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, whenever they hear steel bars wrapped all around me, they are panties are dropping. Let me tell uh, you, but I can let me tell you, you asked me if I've ever taken mine. Um, my my son was was into music. He was a big um uh, he liked uh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd and Huffa Moose. Huffa Moose mm, was a big loved Wait. Big Wait's a great song. Yep. And uh uh Kenny Wayne came to the Tivoli here, the theater here, and I took Carson and he made it about 40 minutes into the opening act and then put his head on my shoulder and slept through the entire Kenny Wayne (laughs) Shepherd in a packed house with people looking at me like what a horrible parent I was because I wouldn't take this child home. But I was there. I had to review the show. And then he went, he liked Aerosmith and I took him. uh, This was at the arena. And he didn't make it through. <laughs> he didn't make it through intermission then either. Yeah. <laughs> but did he make it through the Huffamoose show? Did he, he did get like it. He did like Huffamoose. Huffamoose. He did like Huffamoose. Yeah. I one time asked my morning guy. I said, uh, "It's amazing his Huffamoose song wasn't a bigger hit." And he responded, "Yeah, it turns out no one liked it." <laughs> I uh, <laughs> way to cover to the core of the is issue. That re- is that required for a hit? It, it might be. It might, uh, huh. it might be a huh. important Darn, darndest okay. thing, huh? <laughs> we should really do a show on how to make a hit how to make it <laughs> people make sure people like it yeah first the first goal have someone like it i uh i really don't think it it is going to affect first off I, you know I, you can't affect the, the the insurance policies they're already written um you can't really change much of the agreements that that are are you know already signed and paid for so i can't necessarily think that insurance policies are going to change um, you know, there might no, be a chance, huh? Uh, the only thing I think would change it's, and again, it goes back to kind of, cause I've seen it happen is how strict they enforce what they already have. You know, we've been to play like, like, I'll be honest with you. That's like always used at Lollapalooza. Well, and just attitudes, like that's what I've always loved about Bonnaroo. I mean, for the first eight or 10 years that I went, 
I never saw a security person other than the people on the horse. I remember about the third one mid afternoon on Thursday, two or three people decided they wanted to go skinny dipping in the uh, water fountain there, the, uh, mm-hmm. the mushroom mm-hmm. took all their clothes off and we're just kind of getting wet, cooling off. And yeah. out of nowhere, somebody in a t-shirt just kind of came up and said, uh, you need to get dressed. Also, I love I love how you preface that story by saying they took their clothes off as if they weren't already naked. It's Bonnaroo. They're already they naked. were mostly naked, but they okay. got all the way naked. Yeah. Um, and just that's what I'm saying. It wasn't like, you know, people come flying out of the crowd and threw them to the ground. It was just a mm-hmm. basically you need to put your clothes on. Mm-hmm. And now it feels like, you know, it's a little more follow the rules everybody you know safety security all that kind of stuff so that to me is more what i'm looking at it's just that attitude if if it becomes like theaters where it's more like going to church sit on your hands and be quiet than the dance party's excitement than it used to be then it takes the fun out of it for me yeah i think but i think that your point would be i would understand what you're saying and i don't necessarily disagree with it but you know these were not this was an act of, um, let's just put it this way. The Las Vegas shooting was something that you could absolutely change your policies for. You could enforce harder. You can add stipulations. I don't necessarily know how this incident, which, you know, is not something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, how it's different, but I think that we all just know how different it is. I, I agree. Does that I, make sense? Yeah, I agree from a lo- logical point of view, but lawyers and insurance people don't always think logically. They think worst case mm-hmm. um, sometimes. So, uh, you know, I, I I don't have any proof. I just know that I've seen enough. I've seen what happens when lawyers and insurance get involved. Uh, it, it becomes about rules. And that's what I've always liked about Bonnaroo. While there always are rules, you know, rule number one is don't be an idiot. Don't be that mm-hmm. guy. And, mm-hmm. and like you said, take care of each other. And they have, uh, when it starts shifting where it feels like the people in charge need to be taking care of me more than taking care of each other. It changes. Well, I know that the death toll is horrifying, but at the same time, I think there were some, you know, some pretty important heroes in that whole uh, oh, yes. interaction because I mean, it could have been so much worse. Very true. I, mean, I mean, the people I, I, I saw people taking care of each other and um, you know, you, you hear the horror stories and you hear, you watch the videos and you see Travis Scott being just the worst on stage. And then, um, you know, you see the people screaming, trying to help each other. Right. You know, it just, uh, it, well, there's I just always hardly any words about this. And you've, you know, it, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it, it's always a joke because of who was involved. But you remember several years at Bonnaroo when the kid got just stoned on whatever, crossed the, jumped over the fence. Don't judge me. Well, let's see what you where you go with it. Anyway, uh, he ran across the freeway and came back and got hit by a semi. Oh, yeah, that you terrible know. story. Oh, my God, that was awful. And one of our campmates said, that's our fault, our being the Bonnaroo crowd. And I was like, what are you talking about? He said, we should have taken care of that kid. Somebody should have been looking out for him. Yeah. I see the face. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just always thought about, it. I mean, he's right. And but because that's what happens. That's like you, the person you saw fall out. People took care of her. Um, that's what's meant. Somebody should. Have- I, I, I hear you, but, but you know, I don't know where Brian stone goes in the middle of the night. Well, you know, I know he, he he does his thing, and then out of nowhere, he decides to just go somewhere. I can't. Do no, no, I that. Don't, it doesn't mean following him around. But if you saw <laughs> Brian or I saw you in camp, and you were, you know, not something was bad wrong, I would take care of you, and I think we all would. And that's that's what he meant. Uh, yeah, it but, wasn't supposed. Somebody was supposed to follow him around. I didn't mean that, but if somebody had seen him, somebody should have intervened and. And taking care of him. I don't know, man. I don't necessarily when Lord Taco comes back to camp, ping ponging his way back and forth into the from tree to tree. I don't necessarily say to myself, there's a possibility he's going to go run into the interstate right now. 
Well, uh, Taco, I think Brad reveals himself when he says things like this, doesn't he? <laughs> All you right. I, this, uh, does don't, this don't count you? on Brad to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Does this surprise you at all, Taco? No, no. Of course, I'm a little different. I'm I'm like a homing pigeon. I will always find my way home. So I'm probably not going to go the opposite direction and wander into traffic. You know, right. I can I, just, I can put myself to bed. I don't understand. Okay, okay. I I have a feeling I know who said this. I don't remember this conversation, but I have a feeling I know who said this. And just another eye roll. It's just another thing that this person says that makes me eye roll. That's I predicted it, and you (laughs) you uh, came through. (laughs) I'm okay. Hang on a second. What are no help from Brad? Wait wait a second. If 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 you see somebody come back to camp and they are on one, you're gonna think, well, they're probably just gonna go back out into the festival. They're gonna go back to what's it called? The other stage till five o'clock in the morning. No. Oh, come no, on, Because I've done it. Because I've made sure they got water and I made sure they got into their chair or their tent or whatever. But so who I've says they it. didn't? Who said? No, I made sure they that? did. Well, nobody did for this kid. How do you obviously. know? Because he's know? dead. Well, I know that, but that doesn't mean somebody didn't give him water or they didn't like say, hey, man, you should probably go to bed. Well, um, At some point, someone's just going to go do something dumb. And there's happen. very little it that we're going to be able to do sure. about it. Sure, sure. It can happen. But I'm, what I'm saying is what I have seen and you have seen uh, people, if they fall out, fall asleep, complete strangers. Uh, I've seen it over and over and over where they've come up and, and sure. tried to help. That's, a, that's, a that's little all bit, I'm talking about. All right. That's a little bit you, different. You, no, I'm bit not different. saying they should have, you know, tied him up. When, when I see somebody who looks almost lifeless on the ground. Yes, that's something I'm going to do. When I see somebody who's running around naked and decides to go run out into the street, I don't really know if there's much I can do there. Maybe. And I don't know that. I mean, I'm trying to figure out where he got out of the. Yeah. Plus the whole, how in the world did that happen? Right. Right. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, he could have, he could have snuck off by himself and who knows i don't know the total situation yeah. i'm just saying there is that attitude of taking care of each other um that's important and you we did see that in the houston video that people were trying mm-hmm. for sure yeah i mean I, I i take care of you know my people when they come back to camp like for what's that no. what's that what's that <laughs> they don't I mean, I offered them a Bloody Mary for someone else to make. Yeah, and, and get me um, one. Get me one while you're get up. Get me one while you're there. <laughs> Since she was up. <laughs> Since you're ping-ponging around the bush, why don't you uh, bring me a slice of pizza? <laughs> yeah, you need to walk this off. Go get us both a slice of pizza. <laughs> Go walk this off. Let's help both of you. Both of us. Whatever. Um, next thing I wanted to get to uh, was the uh, Shaky Knees lineup. And, um, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try over the next three to four months in lineup season. First off, I think the shaking these lineup came out of nowhere. I did not expect it to come this early, uh, but good on them, uh, considering, you know, we've heard nothing from anyone uh, about uh, other things. Talk about we that don't even have dates. Yeah, right. So. Yeah. So good on them for putting this out. Um, boy, they had this in their back pocket and they were ready to go. But I think I'm going to keep myself hopefully restrained and I'm counting on you guys to sort of pull the reins back whenever I go off the reservation and start screaming about how this lineup is incredible because last time I did that work out so well for me. Yeah, you're not going to go ACL on this one. No, I'm not. Uh, But on first pass, this is incredibly strong, Um, incredibly strong. Uh, your, uh, your first impressions there, Barry quarter thought the same looking at it a little harder this morning. I, my question as I opened it up was if this were the Bonnaroo lineup, would I be happy? Um, I'd, I'd be I happy. I'd be happy. I, it's not two years ago. Happy. Um, it, it, I'd be very happy obviously. Cause you know, my morning jacket is my favorite. Uh, I'm surprised to see Billy idol that high up on that first day. Um, I mean, we saw him at Bonnaroo, what, seven, eight years ago, and he was not nearly that far up. Um, good show, fun show. Um, yeah, I, I like it. 
I like it. I mean, I think if I, it's interesting that you said if this was the Bonnaroo lineup, if this was the Bonnaroo lineup. I think the rest, of, all of us would be saying, "Where's the rest of it?" Um, yeah. You know, I mean, Shaking Knees is a much different product, but but I will say, I, I think that um, one of the better jobs done in all of music festival world is Shaking Knees. You know, I think that the space is the space, and it's a little wonky here and there. But man, I think that dude does such a good job with with branding i think he does such a good job on site i think the the lineup is always in a certain lane and it's so well crafted and it's just getting better um that's what i was gonna say i i like the uh the lanes mm -hmm. each day is pretty strong yeah i think the biggest surprise to me is putting rainbow kit and surprise over um spoon um but i think that's probably because it's a hometown show for a uh, RKS. So, you know, if it was the other way around and, and this was the lineup for ACL, you'd see spoon above rainbow kitten surprise. I and mean, that's gotta be the highest rainbow kitten surprise has ever been on a festival lineup. Posting. Oh yeah. Uh, but I mean, look how well crafted each day is to service the headliner, right? It, you can really tell, you know, talk about lanes. We've talked about it for two years now. Um, just the Sunday alone, look how well that sort of, you know, all fits together everything sort of fits together and there's still probably 12 you know 15 artists short on sunday yeah you were gonna which, say which something tells me my morning jacket is probably gonna do two sets by the way <laughs> yeah you were gonna say something russ i i think this is my fault because last time you asked me you know would you go back to shaky knees and i'm like well i don't know that lineup would have to be really good for me to go uh -huh. back uh -huh. and here it is uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know what i like we've talked about it too about that is if for me, I'm probably not a going all three days guy anyway. So that Sunday is, if I'm going to go, I would go on that Sunday, but the other two lineups because of the lanes make it appealing. So, yeah. I mean, I like, you know, every now and then, even though I do not like green day, I love seeing this. I mean, I would see green day. And <laughs> if, if they were a, if they were a Bonnaroo band and yes, I have inquired. And I have not gotten an answer back. Um, so read whatever you want to into that or don't. Uh, but Green Day would be a great, is a yeah. great festival band. Um, yeah. And and the 90s resurgence that's happening right now, they fit and it'd be a blast. Uh, I, I have no problem with Green Day whatsoever. Yeah, well, that's perfect. Also, this, it turns out this is the same weekend as uh, 420 Fest, which just killed me. Mm. You mean you're going to miss String Cheese Incident for the ninth straight year? I've um, never been. I've never no. been. So I don't care how many years they've done it. It's still the first time for me. <laughs> yeah. um, well, uh, I was really well, of course, it, maybe this works out because I was really looking forward to that 420 Fest because of the Turquoise show. I was like, I'm finally no. going to get to see this remain no. in light. No. And then out of nowhere, Turquoise breaks up. Yep. And I just looked this morning to confirm they're they're done. Done. They're done. out. Yeah. So they are still that, on this lineup, but they're out. Uh I, I makes... really wanted to see Oysterhead a couple of years ago. Well, I did too. Oysterhead's on there. And I'd like to see Snoop. I think Snoop now falls into that Miley Cyrus thing, Brad, where I, <laughs> well, you know, I, I want to see it so I can say, but I'm not sure on 90 minutes is going to. Well, I think that you can probably, you know, probably pencil that in for a Bonnaroo show. Let's be honest. That I would mean, be awesome. He's sort of hitting everywhere. I mean, we, we saw it. I, I thought that you saw it with me on that Sunday no, I didn't 20... remember. I always left. Remember, Boy, I always year... left early. Yeah, that year was incredible. Um, Erica Badu into Snoop was uh, was something pretty special. Uh, we left. That was our final show. Our final show of that year was Snoop. And I'll never forget um, seeing... I don't really talk to my family all that much. In fact, uh, when I say all that much, I mean ever. Um, so when I ran into my cousin who I hadn't seen in like 10 years and he's walking around backstage, just, uh, just hanging out. Um, just meandering around. I'm like, wait a second. I had to like, re you know, that thing your brain does where like Rolodexes, where do I know this person from? What's yeah. their name? Where when do you, I, when you see someone out of context? Yeah. And yeah. it was my cousin. And I, was like, <laughs> I had to figure out, I was like, do I, is it work contact? Is it a, who yeah. is this? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I couldn't believe it. It was it was one of the weirdest moments of my entire Bonner life was running into my cousin at the Snoop Dogg show. It was very strange. And I asked him why he was there. He's like, just for Snoop. 
<laughs> how many <laughs> festivals are the same weekend like this? It's, is it just those are the only two I know of that are on that same weekend? Last weekend in what April to May? Hmm. I mean, is April, this a... April 29th to May 1st? Well, it's ironic that you bring up dates because we still have heard nothing, nothing from Bonnaroo. Um, you know, this this is something that we brought up during the during the, the pandemic, uh, but the communication from this festival has left a lot to be desired. Um, they've left a lot out on the field and there's just not been a lot of communication. I've seen so many stories of people still looking for refunds. You know, they're not getting their merch that they asked for. Um, there's no communication about even the dates of the festival. Uh, have we heard anything about any of this very quarter? I asked our man, uh, Ken Weinstein, who, you know, uh, is the guy to ask. And he said, no, they don't have any dates. And I said, should I read anything into that? And he said, nope. And that's it literally. Nope. And that's, uh, I'm not putting it on him at all. Uh, he, he's, uh, you know, he works for the group and I'm, I'm sure they have a, I, I, no, I started to say, I'm sure they have a plan. I'm not sure they have a plan. Uh, but the other thing that we're seeing that we haven't seen, I've seen anyway, is, uh, people, lots and lots of people talking about the lack of communication, people that have been fans like us, the, the lifers, you know, it's, uh, the narrative well, uh, is turned. Yeah. Look at Chloe. She was one of the Chloe ones that says she ordered merch months ago and like just got a notification that the order was canceled. No explanation after not hearing anything. And she's understandably upset and she's, you know, the most positive person in the world. So if you turn right. her against you, yeah, it's almost like if you got to the point of no return where you're, you're ticking off all these long-term fans. Yeah. Let me, let me say this as a um, lifelong Washington Redskins fan. Um, and one of the greatest sports franchises in the history of all sports was destroyed in 20 years by a really bad owner. It took 20 years to destroy this brand, but he did it. Um, a lot of times these things and a lot of these um, problems can be cured when the lineup comes out and when you go to the festival, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these airs can be swept under like, oh, I no harm, no foul. Yeah. But, but there is a level of enough's enough, right? So, and I'm not saying they're anywhere close to this, but you can only push that button so many times on someone's, you know, um, uh, dedication to you. Right. So you hope that you have more wins than losses, but it feels like there's, there's, there's a piling on here. There seems like it just keep one thing after another, after another that just keeps, I don't know if they're, they even notice, right? I don't know if they're even paying attention to it because they're in another world doing something else, trying to figure out whatever 2022 is. Maybe that's it. And they're missing a lot of the, the nuts and bolts of stuff, but it does feel like a lot is getting missed. Well, oh, yeah. we've, we've said, I mean, it's been part of the show. I mean, uh, never not great came from Ken Weinstein out of this exact conversation where you and I, uh, and, and Russ, um, you know, since you joined us really would joke every year, you know, two months out that they're changing things. It's going to be terrible. Should we even, do we want to go, you know? They're messing with this. They're messing sure. with that. And uh, then we get there and it's great. Sure. Um, but, but, but with I, all but that being said, you've, you had, you had people not being communicated communicated with getting to the festival last year when it was going to happen uh, based right. on COVID restrictions. We, we didn't hear about that until last minute. There was traffic questions that nobody was uh, answering. We didn't really understand the, the entrance and exits, you know, when they did communicate, though, it was terrific. Yep. Yeah. And mm -hmm. everything was like, oh, OK, they nailed it. That was pretty good. But boy, um, they really do. They really have in the last year and a half through the pandemic. And, and you know, it's too bad. But they really pushed it all the way to the limit. Yeah, it hasn't been. It hasn't. 
if if there is a a lining, I guess it's not that it's been misinformation. It's just been no information. No information. That's right. Yeah, which allows, you know, speculation and rumors right. and all that kind of stuff. That's right. That, that's what's happened. And now with the tickets and the merch, that's a whole different thing. You know, now you're talking about my money. Mm-hmm. And uh, that you, mm-hmm. that's, that's another thing we've always, me especially, bragged on them is I've never felt like they were in my wallet. You know, it was always, it was always cool. Yeah. Uh, and now they're getting into people's wallets and uh, that's, it's hard to overcome if it's just you, but you're, you know, it's a competitive world. And mm-hmm. so, you know, with 420 and shaky knees out with good lineups, Hey, maybe I'll, I'll go try that instead of, you know. Yeah. If you can only afford point. to take time off and, and buy one ticket to a festival a year, mm-hmm. you know, w- at what point do you just decide, Maybe this year I'll go to Shaky Knees yeah, and step on it. I'm a go for a good the point. sure thing. Yeah, what a good a, point. Yeah. Especially when it's only, you know, I, I, am I wrong? I think I might be wrong. At the, I think I am wrong about this. Is Shaky Knees always this same weekend? The end of end of April, 1st of May? I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. My calendar is so screwed up because of COVID. I don't, I don't know w- yeah. what's left and right anymore. But for some reason, I always, I always thought that Shaky Knees was in October for some odd reason. Maybe I'm thinking of Voodoo Fest. Um, so the overall, uh, I guess, lack of a better term, dysfunction, even though it may not even be dysfunction, um, you read anything into it? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, but, um, you know, Russ was right. Chloe obviously is one of those. She's, she was, a you know, friend of the show, as we like to say, been on the show. Uh, she's, she's one of those people willing to travel a great distance. Uh, to go to these type of events and when people when people like her are sort of you know mad about it 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 does give me give me pause and the fact that they haven't announced a lineup when or not a lineup but a date when we fully expect you know what a lineup in six weeks maybe seven well february it's it's usually February, first week of February. Yeah. But... yeah, the date the dates usually come around Black Friday so that they can get the um the Black Friday sales. But I mean, with that being said, I mean I do anticipate a Coachella lineup in the next month, the next three weeks. Um, and and you know, we're getting small trickles out of the Golden Boys people for Coachella. You know, at least they're you know posting something. Um you know, I, I don't know what to read into it. I really don't. I have no yeah, idea how, how to take any of it, mainly because if it wasn't because if it wasn't for when they do communicate, it's done fairly well. Yep. If it wasn't for that, then I might be reading a lot more into it. I would say this. Um, if I were if this was my second or third, um, I would be reading a lot into it. Mm-hmm. But because we have the history and have seen the never not great experience come through. I'm, I'm willing that's, to wait. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so I wanted to uh, get into what the lineup would be if it was announced today. Uh, now this is going to be, I don't want to do this like as a prediction because, you know, unless I get it all right. Then I'll say it was, I predicted this the entire time, but I would like to like, what would you think they're thinking right now? Give me your top two lines and maybe a wild card and uh, a lineup that you think is quite plausible for Bonnaroo. I'm, I'm going to, and this is a total cheat and you can make fun of me all you want, but okay. I would start with some sort of mix of shaky knees and 420. Um, which means that you're not going to do anything from last year. Uh, then I was gonna, yeah, then I would go back. Um, mm-hmm. I still think, man, I still think they have to be looking at Lizzo. Um, you know, there are no, where's the, where's the first female on the shaky knees. Yeah. Good point. Uh, that is a good way, point. Yeah. way, I mean, goodness. Goodness. Goodness gracious. <laughs> um Gee golly goodness whiskers. Dag nap. Um <laughs> it's 
taco. They just don't end. <laughs> and he's yeah. not even doing it on purpose. I can do this all day. Let's keep him going. Let's keep him going. I am doing it on purpose. <laughs> he's not doing it on purpose. I, this is how I, he speaks. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Not really. Um, I think churches is is probably the the most um, female oriented artist than than Japanese breakfast. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yep. That is uh, it. So I'm trying to remember. I didn't think about the last year's Bonnaroo. Who else would be on there? Uh, Isbel, you know, mm. acts like that. Mm. Um, well, I want your I want your three top headliners and your second line. Oh. Come on, Barry. What do you got? Uh, Lizzo, I know Taco's got something. I know Lizzo, Taco's my got, morning got jacket. Um, and I could honestly see Green Day at Bonnaroo. That would make sense. Okay. Um, and then second line. Uh, again, merging uh, Oysterhead, uh, Trey. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that would make some sense. Trey think, again. Yeah, I mean, when was he there last? It was fish. Fish was there two years ago. Yeah, fish was there in Three. 2019. Well, it's not yeah. Trey. Um, I don't think Umphreys is a. Yeah, they may be second line. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Merging those two, Snoop. Uh, we, this is also a fool's errand because they don't do it like this anymore. Uh, but we're doing old school poster uh, lineup, not the way that they do it now, which is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. Oh yeah. Well, I'm trying to kind of thinking that way so lanes though i'm not building lanes hmm. uh, go ahead and hearing, i'll look up my second you're hearing line. barry like live put together a lineup this is what i like this is what i'm going for what is it what does taco have um i really think the nine inch nails on there would be would make a lot of sense that's yeah, kind of too. what i'm got my fingers crossed for um the other one that i'd like to see on there is uh tears for fears you know i thought i Taco, mm -hmm. right down here. My first wild card is Tears for Fears <laughs> because wow. they're going on tour with Garbage. They have they have a new album. They've got a tour. Yeah, yeah. I they're going on sense. tour with Garbage, and, and the first one that I wrote down is my. I've got three wild cards that I don't know. You know where you put them on on a festival lineup, but I have Tears for Fears. My second one is Monoskin, and then my third one's Lizzo. Uh, but right up top, Tears for Fears. That's a good one, my man. That's yeah. about all I got. Okay. <laughs> I got, uh, this is what I got for my top five. Now, um, I'm putting in the wild card Lizzo, but I'm also interchanging Lizzo with a female artist. And I just don't know which one it is, but I would lean the female artist is going to be some sort of urban top 40 thing. So um, I'm going to put Lizzo there anyway, because she's already there from last year in the, in the lineup before that. And the fact that she... Uh, has a new album coming out, right? And she's got new product. So I go Springsteen, Dave Matthews, ACDC, My Morning Jacket, The Strokes. Those are my five. And along the way there on that, you know, the top one, the top two lines are at seven, eight deep. Um, you can interchange a Lizzo, a Tears for Fears, and then... Uh, I think Monoskin is going to be everywhere. I think these guys are going to cash in and strike while the iron is hot. Every festival they can find themselves. The, the shows that they have um, done, it seems as though this crowd is obsessed with this show. I thought it was a pan. What is the, what is the phrase, Barry? Pan something. I don't know. I thought it was literally here. Hey, they go on tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Caca. I thought it was. I oh, thought flash it was in the be, pan. Flash, flash in the, the pan. pan. Yes, I thought these guys were going to be here and then gone. Uh, but my God, I don't know if I don't know if they're gonna they're gonna be stuck with us for a while. I mean, <laughs> we are going <laughs> to see them at every festival. I'm surprised, stunned that Shaky Knees doesn't have them. Um, so there you go. I think that that's my uh, that's my best guess. Bruce so, returning, Dave Matthews Band for the first time in 12 years. Yeah, I didn't um, think about that one. No, nobody brought up Coldplay. Was kind of a Coldplay early... isn't. I don't think Coldplay's happening. You don't think so? No, I don't think Coldplay's happening. Mainly because I don't. I'll put it, the, I, it for me. I don't know if anyone anticipated how bad this album was going to be. I mean, it is dog shit. <laughs> it is literal dog shit. And I know how 
you know, a lot of people and a lot of DSPs had to get in bed with Coldplay because they're huge and it's an event anytime they um, put something out. But I don't, they did a song with BTS for Christ's sakes. It is awful. That, Absolutely that's why, awful. That's why Brad hates it already. Yeah. I hate it. Hate it. <laughs> well, I don't. And, uh, I don't really like Coldplay to begin with, but that like they put out that tour with a huge gap right there in June. That I think that was why people were thinking eh, it could be Coldplay. Well, I've I, I've I've asked the question, and I just mm-hmm. haven't gotten a lot of firm yeses on this. I think um, we talked about it's it. Been a lot of. Eh, I don't think so. I think mm-hmm. we talked about it back at ACL with the Clint Black. Does a Taylor Swift even enter into something like a Bonnaroo? I don't. I not at seven million dollars, five million dollars. No. Yeah. I mean, I think it would cost them just an arm and a leg. Now, say they did it. I think a Coachella is probably more likely pulling a, um, a Taylor Swift with a bony Vare sub headliner and and bring Justin Vernon and and you know the national up. I could see that happening at Coachella. I just don't know if it happens at Bonnaroo. I, that would, it would cost you a fortune. And I don't know if the rate of return is, is enough. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I guess I'm thinking of it in, in light of, are they, do they have to, do they feel like they have to come out, you know, super, super strong in 22 because of 21 and 20, or do they just need to get back? to doing what they do and let's go we have i have heard somebody ask that question for 10 straight years every (laughs) year at camp somebody's like you know they're really i bet they're banking money for next year you know i bet next year their 15th anniversary is gonna be really big i bet their 10th anniversary is gonna be really it never did no yeah no i don't think they've never they've never felt that kind of pressure they don't need to do anything big. They don't have to come no, out really swinging. They're going to do I, their I, thing. I, and I tend to agree. I just, um, I don't know. I, I just was asking, she, you know, she did the Saturday night live and, uh, did a, what a 10 minute version, which I had not. Yeah. Seen I'm still Saturday listening to it. It started yeah. on Saturday. I'm still listening to it's it. It's pretty long. I uh, look, I, I think that tonally it could fit. I think you're, you're asking two questions. I think Taylor Swift could work at Bonner. Yes. Because I think that she has tried to create enough indie credibility with the national and with um, Jack Antonoff and Boney Vare. I, I mean, if you if you told me that Taylor Swift was going to be a Bonnaroo, I would bet every dollar that I have that Bleachers, the National, Boney Vare, and Big Red Machine are playing too. Yeah, there'd have to be a lane. Um, I just, you know, she's on my radar because I couldn't tell you a single song that she sings but i've had so many people that i know and respect that i never would have imagined go to see her because it's a great show and i just kind of want to see it so i don't know i don't know if it's one of those uh you know walk bys uh because you ain't walking by taylor swift but i that's i agree that's what i think i think it's a great i want to see it it's a big big production i think that i i don't disagree but i just think that that is just I just in a different it. stratosphere than where Bonnaroo is. I hear you. I, I, I mean, mean good answer. This, I think they're more likely to book Beyonce than Taylor Swift. Interesting. Okay. I just, I, I, I can't. I, I'm not math arguing and, with you. Well, no, I, I just spot on the math. <laughs> is astronomical. The amount of money. I, you know what? How about this? I'll go th- the opposite way. If I'm, you know, Ben or Steve, and I say, okay, uh, how much is it going to take to get Taylor Swift? I want Taylor Swift. I think she would be the thing that, I mean, your the well, budget for the budget for Lollapalooza is somewhere between 35 and $45 million for talent. Uh, my bet for Bonnaroo is it's 15. You know, they're, they're not telling us that number. But my bet's 15 to 20. Um, that would take half of your budget. I, I'm willing to bet that she's somewhere between five and seven million dollars. <laughs> no, Maybe I'm just making what was, I mean, what was McCartney? He was five, wasn't it? I think it was a buck and a half. Mm, I thought it was more than that. I think it was a buck and a half. 
So maybe you could get Taylor for maybe you could get Taylor for two and a half. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you could get Taylor for two, two and a half. Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm totally overvaluing this and it would be an absolute home run. And even as a guy who doesn't even I can't stand Taylor Swift and I know I'm going to break every Swifty's heart and I'm going to have all the knives thrown at me forever because I dare, dare, dare say something to hurt a billionaire, beautiful woman's feelings. Uh, but no, I can't. I, I, she does nothing for me. Um, I find it all to be a, a hype machine scam, uh, but it would be a home run and I'd go. Yeah. Well, there you go. All right. Okay, all right. I got one more topic. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. All right. Lord Taco, the floor is yours. The oh. floor is yours. Oh, you want to, you want to talk much, about how much did Dune. you love Dune? How much did you love so much? Dune? I've yeah. watched it three and a half times or so this that, that this only took a movie. week and a half well <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like one of those to me it's like a comfort movie you can just kind of put on and just have on during the day and just sit down and watch it like no matter what you're doing like golf kind of like golf <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i loved it i feel like this is the best treatment of the novel that we've gotten um i feel like this is the movie we've been waiting for better than for... better than the original Oh, way better. This is the, the original was was not that great. I know that, but it it's your hero. I mean, it was it was good. It was a good David Lynch film, but it was not close to the book at all. This is okay. the best treatment of the novel that that like respected the the book itself mm-hmm. and didn't didn't deviate too far. Mm. And it wasn't perfect, but you know, I think for what they had. I think splitting it up into two movies makes a lot of sense rather than okay. trying to cram it all into one. All right. You've, you've read all the books or just the ones that matter? I've read the first two. Okay. So, and, and there's a whole bunch of them, right? And a whole, like the back half of them are not even really so, Dune books, right? Yeah. So there's, there's six main books that Frank Herbert wrote. Mm-hmm. He had plans and notes for a seventh, but he, but he died before he could finish it. Um, His son, Brian Herbert, and another author um, supposedly took his notes and have just been, ever since the 80s, they've been cranking out novel after novel after novel. Uh, And it it has contradicted so much stuff that was in the originals that people are just like, this is garbage. So there's really sort of like the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I much prefer the Old Testament. Yeah. That one was yeah. for Barry. I guess. Didn't see that but, coming. All right. So, uh, no, there's there's the six main books to pay attention to. Okay. I, I really doubt they're going to get all six books adapted, but they're I gonna make, see. They're going to make 20 movies, aren't they? They're going to take these six books and make 20 movies out of them. I mean, they could. I mean, this, this, uh, just the six books spans like, you know, 5,000 years worth of story. Okay. So, the, the first movie takes you how deep into the first book? About halfway. Okay. You think second movie is the other half or does it? S- second movie is probably going to be a, the other half. Um, but I could, I would really like to see them maybe do a trilogy out of just the first book. I think they milk. could, they They're could milk stretch this, this into three movies. Can, as they show, they just milk this thing for as much as Are you as at all can. bothered? I mean, and I'm not, a, I haven't read the books. Uh, are you at all bothered that they haven't even started filming the second one? No. I yeah. wouldn't be either, man. I mean, it's just a green screen. <laughs> just a lot of sand. No, it's not even <laughs> yeah. sand. It's a green screen. That's what drives me nuts. It's everything CGI anyway. So it's so, not like well, the thing. The, the, took a while. How long did it take them to do this one? Well, it's hard to know because they. I think they had this movie ready before 2020. I think they were planning on a 2020 release and then they had to sit on it for a year and a half. I, they've been making this movie for five years. Of course, that yeah. was starting with nothing. To make a sequel, it takes a lot less time because you've already got actors, you've already got sets, mm-hmm. props, everything designed. I mean, I'm sure they've got all this ready to go. All they got to do is start filming. Hmm. I think 2023 uh, is when when they're anticipating. Hmm. Barry, what did you think about it? I thought it was just slow. I mean, I didn't hate it like you did. I just thought it was longer. Than I haven't said be. a word about what I well, feel about the movie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I it was longer than you think. You know me that well, huh? You think you know me that well, but you know exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. About it. Maybe, yeah. Um, I know you fell asleep 
So I'm going to guess that meant you weren't overly thrilled. Twice. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I didn't dislike it. I liked it okay. Um, it, it felt like it stretched things out a little. It could have been a half hour shorter anyway. Plus, it, it could have been. It, yeah, it could have been. There was a little to, bit of. Felt to me like it was a, a basically a trailer. It was a very, very long trailer for what I hope is a really good second movie with a lot more action. That's what I felt. Yeah, like. this this was mostly to set up for the second act. Yeah, which is not what I want from a two hour and ten minute or whatever it is. Movie. It was two forty seven, wasn't it? Two forty seven. It was a bunch. Was All it right, really? Now- I'm not gonna. Like I'm not gonna. Half. I'm not gonna dog on something that Taco likes so much. Um, but uh, I have the problem that I've always had with the Lord of the Rings, the Dune, any of these sort of whatever. Sci- they're not sci-fi. Whatever this genre is, it's if sci-fi. I, if I wanted to spend hour upon hour upon hour with you know magical dragons and swords i just do drugs you know i do just do sit there with mushrooms and <laughs> i couldn't understand a word they were saying for the first hour i don't know these planets i don't know these people i don't know what any of these words mean it, like i need a, a glossary the entire i need a dictionary a dune dictionary Man, to follow this and then if the, the worst there's part one is, in the book okay <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. There's a there's a glossary in the book. And yeah. like while you're reading, if you don't know what a term is, you have to go refer to the refer to the uh, glossary. If you make me refer to the source material to watch a movie, I am probably going to be tapping out. And so then my final problem is, is when when ever, whenever one of these movies happens, they always just assume that I care about insert situation and person here. This movie didn't give me a chance to give a damn about any of these people. I don't know why I care about this kid, but he's naked. Uh, I know I know I saw him shirtless twice, uh, but I don't know why I'm supposed to care about him. And here's the other thing, too. My my final point here, Taco, is that everybody in this universe is got this bizarre Sarkinesian and and Zimbabwek or whatever these names are. And then you have Paul. And a guy named Paul. What's your what's your what's, what's your criticism? I don't know. I mean, I don't You're know mad he wasn't named it. Brad. And a guy named Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Chip. Yeah, I don't know. Chip, uh, yeah it, just a random guy named Gary. We, just it, the whole thing made me so. And then the worst part of it is I, I fell asleep twice in the first viewing. Um, within 45 minutes, I I went back and watched it again. Got through the whole thing. Fell asleep again. I uh, took a little nap in the in middle and I don't think I missed anything. I don't think I missed one bit of the story. I still don't know what's going on. If yeah, I live to be a million years old, if I live to, if I live to 10,000, I don't think I'd know what was going on in this movie. Can you answer that taco? If, if you had not read the books, if you knew very little, would you have liked Oh yeah. It? I forgot to tell you a spoiler alert. I haven't read any of the books. I, yeah. Well, yeah, you, so, yeah. You, you don't read I, <laughs> yeah you and a glossary uh, somebody's gonna have to define what a glossary is to you first <laughs> I, I it's hard to answer because i don't know i mean yeah. since i've i mean i read these books one probably 10 times starting when i was like 15 yeah so the so, other thing you know is, I've, i'm so familiar with it that i i mm-hmm. it, i can't objectively say if this was a you know if i hadn't watched it if i would mm-hmm. still enjoy it as much i don't know mm-hmm. which is the other thing i remember when my kids started reading the harry potter books what a phenomenon it was but i remember when they made the first movie and there were story after story about the kids who had read it who didn't want to see the movie at least until they had read the final book Mm -hmm. because they didn't want the film to influence you know i felt the same way about 50 shades of gray (laughs) <laughs> well you it was kind of the that same i was gonna look like huh <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of the same with uh watchman you know like people who'd read the graphic novel loved it people who didn't read it didn't Man, understand it russ you just made a great point that i have never watched i mean i've never read i've, I've never spent one second with watchman and i was obsessed with that show obsessed i thought it was incredible I'm, oh, I'm not talking about the show i'm talking about the movie oh no i like the tv show 
Well, the TV like, show was it was a separate work. This was not based on the comic. I mean, it was in the oh. same universe, but it was a totally different story. The movie was adapted from the comic. Oh, and the TV show yeah. wasn't? No, the TV show was an all new story. And I love the TV show, too. I think it okay. stands alone. But I mean, it, you don't have still, to see the movie. But you still need to. There is based on some sort of version of what the, the overall story was and, and going back mm -hmm. to the, yeah. the race it's, riot in Missouri. Yeah, I mean it's a continuation of that storyline. It's okay. you know, yeah. set later later I in the you. timeline, but but that I gets to you. the my point is sometimes you can read the book and your expectation, you know, if the movie doesn't have this or that or changes mm -hmm. a little bit, it so to hear you say you liked the movie, I mean I, I do How that, close to the overall book was it? Uh the closest we've gotten. David Lynch's was not close at all. Uh he completely missed the point of the book. Um <laughs> The Sci-Fi Channel like put out a miniseries about 20 years ago that was close, but it was so low budget. I mean, you talk about, you know, bad CGI, bad effects, bad costumes. I mean, it was just a little cheesy, but it, it, it did treat the book a little bit better than David Lynch. This is like the best of the best. I mean, as far as closeness to the story and execution. I like so it. you like it. You're in. Yeah. I'm in. I'm all in. Okay. Um, all right. I'll, I'll probably well, read look, the book again. I don't. I don't. I don't like Star Trek. I don't like Star Wars. I don't like Lord of the Rings. I don't like. Well, there the, you go. I mean, the, the Harry Hobbits. I don't. It's just not my thing. But I'm. I'm gonna watch the second one, just like I watched all the Star Wars movies. And you know, here's the other thing too: is like the the later Star Wars movies, the ones that came out the last couple of years. Those I love. I love, you know why? Because I don't need to know anything walking in, you know? I need to know very little about what's actually going on. Oh yeah, that's his dad's mom. He's really mad, got it. What's next? Yeah. Um, I thought those were a phenom phenomenal watch, but boy, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work to watch this movie. Well, you, you mean, you don't like Game of Thrones. Do you even watch? Oh God, no, no. Yeah. See, I, I hated loved it. it. And I'm not a dragon. It. I mean, I'm not a dragon movie You're, fan. Wait a second. But I like Wait that. a second, Lord Taco. Mm -hmm. We just broke some news. <laughs> Barry is not a dragon. I'm not a dragon. <laughs> I've never seen him breathe fire. No one can prove otherwise. Uh, uh, all right, I there you it. go. I love it. That's, so. that's, that's all I got for today. All right. That's, Good. Yet stuff. again, going to be a short show. And then we go an hour and <laughs> yeah. exactly. Every time. Every time. All right, next week, War on Drugs with a, a special uh, once- in a lifetime first ever event in podcast what podcast history next week Lord Taco Barry Corner Brad talk to you next week love you bye. Consequence Podcast Network